Green Acres Facts That They Hid From Fans Green Acres was an American television drama starring Eddie Albert and Ava Gabor that premiered on CBS back in 1965. The TV show is a series based on the married New Yorkers Oliver and Lisa Douglas. Oliver is a successful lawyer who aspires to buy his own farm against Lisa's desires. The pair moves from their New York mansion to a modest farmhouse on the countryside. The program was popular among viewers throughout its almost 10-year existence and continues to be one of their favorites today. Here are some Green Acres facts that they hid from fans. The program was based on a radio show. Similar to numerous television programs that were airing at the same time, Green Acres began as a radio program named Granby's Green Acres. The radio program followed an ex-banker who became a farmer despite the fact that he was far better at his former job. The radio program had a brief run. It was only broadcast for seven weeks in the summer of 1950. But Jay Summers, who created the radio program, benefited from this since he revived it on television more than 10 years later. Both actors conveyed aspects of their genuine lives. It comes out that actors Eddie Albert and Ava Gabor shared certain characteristics with their characters. Albert owned a greenhouse where he cultivated organic veggies and converted his front yard into a cornfield where he worked. Ava Gabor, on the other hand, was the owner of a wide variety of animals, including puppies, cats, poultry, and bunnies. She seemed to have an urban side as well, like her character, as she flaunted her pets at gatherings and was totally unprepared when her bunnies multiplied. The theme tune was composed by a well-known musician. The Green Acres theme tune stands out because it's both highly catchy and appropriate for the program. This isn't surprising, however, since Vic Mizzy, who is most renowned for his work as a composer for television and movies, is the only person who could have created it. His best-known pieces were inspired by comedies from the 1960s and 1970s. His most well-known works are The Addams Family and Green Acres, among others. The theme song is also the first time the show's stars had performed it. There was no editing or improvisation. Most performers sometimes improvise, whether on television or in the film, it comes easily to them. On the set of Green Acres, it wasn't tolerated or encouraged, contrary to how most directors operate. Albert claims that there wasn't time to improvise on the show since it was so brilliantly crafted that it couldn't be enhanced. No words were ever modified. Never before or since have I been in a situation where I didn't want to mess about with a phrase or whatever, but there, not a word. The program was based on actual occurrences. Although it would sound a bit far-fetched for a prominent Manhattan lawyer to drop everything and attempt to salvage a bankrupt farm, the program was based on actual events. The creator of the program, Jay Summers, said in an interview, When I was a child, my stepfather gave me the concept. He had a terrible desire for a farm, and now he had one. I still recall having to dig potatoes. It irritated me. I was so bitter as a teenager that I won't even do the landscaping at our house now. Oliver and Lisa connected well together for a reason. Oliver and Lisa's wonderful chemistry was one of the show's best features and one of the reasons why the show was so successful. This was not a coincidence, however, since Eddie Albert and Ava Gabor were close friends in real life. This made it easy to convey their connection on TV and made their affection for one another in the program seem extremely real. Given that they were close friends and had worked together for so long, Albert was devastated when Gabor died in 1995. Albert was impressed by Gabor's elaborate feather attire. Addie Albert, a well-known environmentalist, had kindly requested Ava Gabor that she abstain from dressing in ensembles covered with many feathers when appearing on TV. When Gabor objected, Albert said he didn't want any of the female admirers to mimic her look and kill more birds. Albert questioned her about where she believed feathers originated, to which she said that the feathers don't come from birds. In her response, she said, Darling, pillows. Feathers are produced by pillows. Numerous Easter eggs were found. There were a few minor Easter eggs strewn throughout the presentation, but they weren't thrust into the viewers' faces. In one episode, Lisa reprimands Oliver for his lack of culinary experience by saying, You were aware that I couldn't cook, sew, or maintain the home when you married me. All I was able to do was imitate Zsa, Zsa Gabor while speaking in Hungarian. Coincidentally, Ava Gabor's real-life sister is Zsa, Zsa. 
Additionally, there are several allusions to the Beverly Hillbillies and Petticoat Junction, both of which were created and written by Paul Henning, the executive producer of Green Acres. The pair even stages a local version of the performance at one point. There was a TV movie reunion. It only made sense to bring the program back for one last time after the initial series' popularity. Thus, Return to Green Acres, a fantasy film, was released in 1990. The movie takes place 20 years after the original series, when Oliver and Lisa have returned to New York but are dissatisfied with the city. Coincidentally, the residents of Hooterville want the Douglas family to come back to the town to stop a developer from destroying it. It was cancelled during the Rural Purge. Unfortunately, Green Acres ended in 1971 after a strong six-year run, which was disappointing for the show's creators, stars, and viewers. It wasn't the only program to have its airtime taken away in 1971 either, but according to many, it was the main show that felt the hit. The actor who portrayed Mr. Haney, Pat Buttram, referred to that year as the year CBS canceled anything with a tree. The Beverly Hillbillies, Petticoat Junction, The Andy Griffith Show, Lassie, Mayberry RFD, and Hee Haw were among the programs that were eliminated during what became known as the Rural Purge. Hooterville's location is still unknown. Although viewers are aware that Oliver and Lisa formerly resided in Manhattan, New York, before relocating to the little town of Hooterville, they are unaware of the town's precise location. Some people think the location of the show is Greendale, North Carolina, since Summers formerly lived there and worked on a farm there, and the play is loosely based on his life. However, Mr. Haney claims that the village is only approximately 300 miles from Chicago at one point in the series. The accents of the characters are also inconsistent, which doesn't help. Based on the manager of Elvis Presley, Mr. Haney. Actor Pat Buttram, who portrays Mr. Haney in the movie Roustabout, met General Tom Parker, Elvis Presley's manager, when they were both on the set. A year later, when he was offered the role of Mr. Haney, he admitted that Parker served as the model for his persona. If that's the case, it's obvious that Buttram did not have a positive interaction with Parker, given that Haney is regarded as sleazy and dishonest salesperson. In the end, he even plans to level the community. Eddie Albert adopted the hypothesis as his own. Before Green Acres, Eddie Albert, who played Oliver Douglas, expressed concerns about television, saying that it was geared to mediocrity. He was, however, on board with the program until his agency introduced him to the concept of Green Acres. On the idea of the program, he said, OK, that's me. The rat race becomes old on everyone. Everyone wants to throw it away and plant some vegetables. It's simple. I'm in. Since I knew it would work, needed to be. Apparently, he was correct. Hank Patterson had almost no hearing. By the time Hank Patterson accepted the role of Fred Ziffick on Green Acres, he was almost entirely deaf. This was caused by his underlying condition. Even though this occasionally complicated matters, CBS knew that they had to keep him on the show because he was so well liked by both viewers and the rest of the cast. Naturally, they employed a variety of gimmicks to assist Patterson in speaking his lines. One of them involved placing a dialogue coach out of sight on the stage who would tap him on the leg with a yardstick when it was time to deliver his lines. People began to appreciate the show again in the 1990s. The program was revived by Nick at Night in the 1990s with the tagline, It's not stupid, surrealism. It's Alberts told people that he agreed with this adage, I once heard from a lecturer that kids see it as surrealistic. Comedy is comparable to Voltaire, Gulliver's Travels, and the Pickwick Papers. It's so absurd that it ends up becoming the fundamental truth. There could be even more episodes of Green Acres to come. In 2012, a book was written for the Broadway stage, and at the same time, speculations of a movie started to spread. Since then, not much has been heard, but that doesn't imply they've been postponed or that they won't make a comeback. The pig they treated like a son was Arnold Ziffel. The inclusion of Arnold Ziffel in the series was amusing. The parents loved Arnold like their kid, even though he was obviously a pig. He's a well-cared-for indoor pig who reportedly understands English since they sent him to school. Oliver refuses to regard the pig as a person, while everyone else treats him like a child. He humorously messes up on this, however, and treats him the same way as everyone else does. Neither of the stars was chosen initially for their roles. 
Surprisingly, neither Albert nor Ava were considered potential Green Acres actors. Only after actor Don Amici declined was Eddie Albert given the role. Marsha Hunt and Janet Blair both submitted screenplays for consideration for the part of Lisa Douglas, but in the end, Paul Henning selected Ava Gabor. However, CBS cautioned him that people would have trouble understanding her strong Hungarian accent, so he disregarded their advice. Issues with Ralph Monroe Alf asserts that they disguised Ralph as a boy because if others realized she was a woman, they wouldn't be able to get employment. CBS executives eventually clashed over this because they thought viewers, especially males, would find it difficult to believe that a woman could perform a blue-collar job. There was a dreadful rumor regarding Arnold the Pig. The Pig, Arnold, was beloved by viewers and a mainstay of the program. The adorable creature produced a lot of funny moments and was even referred to as the genuine star of Green Acres. Audiences were interested to learn what happened to Arnold after the show ended, however. When questioned about Albert on one occasion, Tom Lester, who portrayed Ab Dawson, said they fried and ate him at the luau-themed rap party. Even though it was eventually shown to be untrue, this scared a lot of people. Sam Drucker supported Oliver Sam Drucker, the only character to appear in both Petticoat Junction and Green Acres, was portrayed by actor Frank Cady. Drucker performs a variety of tasks, including postmaster, newspaper editor, storekeeper, and volunteer firefighter. The only figure who supports and concurs with Oliver's plan to go to rural America is Drucker, a hard-working, straightforward guy. His bald head was often made fun of by the other characters, but Drucker was okay with it. The story was based on reality. It may be difficult to picture a suit and tie clad city dweller quitting their lucrative corporate job in the financing industry to restore a rundown farm in the middle of nowhere without having any experience with farming or country life, but one person in particular has actually done just that, sort of. When Jay Summers was a little boy, his stepfather apparently had the idea that he wanted a farm. He quickly acquired the land and fulfilled his objective. The only thing his stepdad wanted to do was plant some potatoes, but Little Summers had no interest in helping. As wealthy kids do, he detested working on the farm and was quite angry about the circumstances. So, even if the circumstance wasn't precisely the same as in Green Acres, Summers at least had a solid understanding of the issue to draw upon for inspiration.